Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Earlier this week, I launched my top 10 most anticipated games coming out at the Eschen Spiel Fair. The fair is next week. Uh, and that list of was games that I had not played, uh, mostly, and which ones sounded the coolest. This video is, in my opinion, more important than the other video. However, the other one always gets more views. I don't know why. This video is for games that I've already played. Most of these I've recently reviewed, and they're games that have come out just recently that I've had the pleasure of playing. Some of these are still, they've never been released yet. Uh, but they are going to be releasing at Essen. Some of them released like just before Essen, but still it's close enough that people going to Essen, you're going to be able to get it. Maybe even if you're not at Essen. But again, I think this list is better than the other list because it's ones that I've already reviewed a lot of these or played them and they're tried and true. So let's go with my top 10, uh, the top 10 games that are coming out of Essen that I've already played. Here we go. Number 10. Number 10 is a small two-player sort of tile laying game or a tile moving game called Yosemite. This is from WizKids. This is based off a game that I love called Bumuntu. Same designer, same concept. It's an abstractish game where you're moving your pawn from one animal to another animal and it moves differently depending on which animal it's on. So one might move straight, one might move in corners, one might let you move an opponent, things like that, but you're collecting that afterwards and you're trying to gather animals to take pictures of them, you're trying to get to spots to take pictures of them, and there's a lot of inter uh, interconnectedness of animals and pictures and points. I think it took Bumuntu, which was a game I loved, and it took it and it made it into a two-player game. That, the original game had a fluctuating market, which obviously doesn't work as well with a two-player. So they kind of changed the way that the two-player scores, but it has, you know, the same basic idea. I really like it. If you like little two-player quick games that are 20 minutes and offer a lot of depth and you like abstract nature things, but also set collection and long-term strategy as, as well as uh, very right now tacticalness, Yosemite, you're going to want to check out. Number nine. Next one is actually an expansion and it's an expansion for Sagrada. It's Sagrada Glory. Now, the reason why it's on this list is because I love Sagrada. I've played all the expansions and reviewed all the expansions. This one is probably my favorite of the three facade, uh, the great facade series expansions, three sort of small boxes. My favorite expansion is still the five to six player. Don't let it fool you. The best part about that expansion is the private dice pool. But Glory, the reason why this is on this list is because all the three small expansions come with new dice that allow you to do different things. Those are all things that sometimes I'll play with, sometimes I won't. The three things that come in this expansion that don't have to do with that dice, I will play with every single time, like private goals and different goals that now you're rushing towards for other people, or maybe coming in first, second, or third place. Gives a lot more interaction in the game. If you like Sagrada, this is the best expansion out there for one of the smaller series, Sagrada Glory. Number eight. This next one is called Acropolis. This is a tile laying game in sort of three-dimensional layers where you're gonna be drafting different types of tiles like uh, you know, residences and barracks and uh, uh, temples and markets. And depending on how you place these, they'll score differently. Like the markets want to be on the edge. They don't want to be next to anyone for competition. The temples want to be surrounded by tiles. They want a lot of people around. The residences want to be attached to each other, things like that. But you only score those if you're able to draft the scoring tiles for that type of building. And as you're building, the higher you go up, the more you'll score, but you're also covering other things and you don't score for anything that you've covered. Very interesting choices if you like tiling, if you like three-dimensional tiling, if you like drafting, this is a fantastic one, Acropolis. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. This next one is from Pandasaurus Games. This is a real-time game for those that don't like real-time games called Wild Style. Uh, this game reminds me of basically Reiner Knizia's Blue Lagoon, but if you played it real-time, because you are network building, you're route building, you're tagging places around the, 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 the districts with your spray cans, because uh, you're basically tagging names and stuff. But the game is basically real time where you are drawing or discarding or grabbing cards to make sets, to place sets of similar icons on your board and then placing one of your tokens on that icon on the board. But what you're really trying to do is build up sets on the board of different things. And those change every game. Sometimes it's like five in a row. Sometimes it's like five in a district. Sometimes it's like a bunch of these types of uh, icons. So, so it's all these different types of end game goals that change every game. 
and it's real time. But the reason why I think it's good for people that don't like real time is because at the end of the round, you still get as much time as you want to finish the things you've already been working on. And if you're not quite as fast as other people, you don't get as much stuff out, it's okay because those stay there and you get to use them next round in addition to everything else that you normally get. So it's very forgiving to people that don't typically like uh, real-time games, but if you do, it's awesome. Set collection of real-time, fantastic. Wild Style from Panasaurus. Number six. This next one is called Challengers. This is from Z-Man Game. Uh, this is a, how do I, this is like <clears throat> gamer war. But it's also deck construction. So you're going to be drawing cards from a team. You're basically playing capture the flag. You're playing mini games against another opponent that takes like five minutes to play. And then you'll go off and you'll go to another board and play against a different opponent. It plays up to, I think, I believe it's eight players. And the, again, you're, you're playing these little tournaments and you're playing cards, but you're playing them blindly from the top of your deck one at a time. But between each, each game that only talks about, takes about five minutes, you're drawing new cards that are getting more and more powerful, and then you're possibly thinning out or culling your deck to synergize with abilities. So you might not know exactly what card you're pulling, but you know what's in your deck, and you're trying to be the one to either be the last one standing and take the flag, or force the other player to lose enough that they filled up their bench too much. It's really cool. It's a very unique game, unlike anything I have, that can play eight players simultaneously in a tournament-style game, up to, you know, in, in like 45 minutes. But it even works just fine with two players too. So it's a really cool, unique thing, challenges. Number five. This next one was actually my number one anticipated at Gen Con called Turing Machine. Now it's still not really out yet, but they are having a bigger release at Essen. So I wanted to put it on this list. This is a straight up hardcore deduction game that is pretty much multiplayer solitaire. If you like solo, deduction puzzles, like when I was a kid I used to do, and I still do, uh, sort of like uh, those logic puzzles in bed and stuff. If you like Sudoku and logic puzzles and thinking in that way in solo games, you're gonna love this game. There is some interaction of like, a little pressure luck of who is going to guess the thing this turn, because it's all simultaneous and that part has interaction. But other than that, it's pretty much a solarized deep deduction game. So if you like deduction and you don't mind doing a little bit of a puzzling on your own, have a little bit of pressure luck if you're gonna win or not versus the other players, this is a fantastic one. Turing machine where you're trying to figure out the three digit code by asking all different questions. And by the way, with the app, there's over 7 million puzzles you'll be playing with this. Number four. This next one is the new edition of Castles of Mad King Ludwig. This is the collector's edition. I'm not sure exactly what versions they will have at the at the at the convention i know that there's multiple versions available there's the standard collector's edition which is awesome there's the royal collector edition which i just reviewed which has uh upgraded sort of poker chips for the favors it has some weighted swans and things like that and then there is the colossal version which is basically four times bigger than the original version it's, it's insane it's amazing anyway any one of these versions is awesome it's all of them are way better than the original version all the new artwork the components are top notch, the game trays. Basically, they did the treatment that they did for Suburbia back a few years ago with their collector's edition with Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which Castles of Mad King Ludwig essentially is like you're building your own castle. You're putting rooms together. Certain rooms thematically work well or work don't work well with some buildings. Some, some rooms, like you don't want an activity room next to a sleeping room. You get minus points for that, but you want something outside that looks kind of cool. You get more points for that. Sometimes you're going down into the dungeon. Really cool making your own castle. And there's a big I split you choose mechanism where someone is setting the price of all the tiles each round. It's a fantastic game, and this game takes it off the charts. Collector's Edition, Castle Mad King Ludwig by Bezier Games. Number three. This next one, uh, again, had a super limited release at Gen Con. I think they brought 100 copies. It sold out really fast. But they're having the main big release at Essen. I've reviewed this game. It is definitely gonna be in my top 10 games of the year. This is Evergreen from Horrible Guild. This is from the same designer that did like Dragon Castle. Uh, he's also done party games like Soundbox, which is interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, he also did Photosynthesis. And this is basically like a sequel to photosynthesis. Very different, but some of the mechanisms carry over. Like you're building your own board and you're gonna be building wood and trees and, and making trees from smaller trees to big trees. And you're gonna be gathering points for having the sun hit those trees. That part's like photosynthesis. But unlike photosynthesis, you're not playing on one board. You have your own board. So it's a little more friendly 
It's not as mean as, as photosynthesis, but you are drafting cards. And the best part about this game is the cards that you draft help you build certain areas, but the card that nobody drafts becomes more valuable. And it's things are at odds with each other. It is a beautiful production. It looks awesome. The game plays in about 45 minutes. If you're playing a two player, it plays in about 30 minutes and is a lot of game for that time period. You feel like you've played a full game experience at the end of this and it looks great and it's awesome. It's so streamlined, it's so polished and it looks great, evergreen. Number three from, Ever, uh, from uh, Horrible Guild. Number two. All right, number two would have been my number one most anticipated game on my other list, but it's not because I've already reviewed it. I recently got a copy, Splendor Duel. Uh, even people that have not really loved Splendor love this version because it's a better game. Uh, the original designer, Mark Andre, uh, teamed up with Bruno Cathala, who happens to be my favorite designer and who I think is the best two-player designer in, in, the, in the industry. Um, they treated this like, like they did with Cyber Wonders Duel. They took a game that everyone loves, not everyone, but is widely loved, and put it into a package that is an even better, deeper experience. Just as quick, two player, it's just amazing. There's an abstract component of you're, you're trying to figure out how to take the gems. So now there's a big game within the game of how to take the gems. You're taking them in straight lines, which ones you're leaving for the opponent, when to refill the board because you're giving the other player a free gem when you do so essentially. The cards that you put in front of you now, some of them have special abilities that trigger. Uh, there's three ways to win. And any of these happen in, like, like uh, immediately. Lots of tension there, lots of push and pull. This is fantastic. Whether or not you've liked Splendor, this is a better version. And even if you didn't like Splendor, you might still like this one because it is that different, even though it shares a lot of similarities. Splendor Duel, it's amazing. Number one. My number one uh, game that's going to be fully released at Essen here is Ready, Set, Bet by uh, AEG. I got a chance to play this at Gen Con as a sneak peek, and then I reviewed it shortly after. This is probably one of the most special games I have in my entire gaming library because there's nothing like it. This is as if you took the screaming, yellering, hollering, real-time fun of like Panic on Wall Street or Pit, and you put it with a horse racing game where the horses are racing down and players are in real time making bets as to what they think, which horse is gonna win, place or show. But even on top of that, each race can have its own prop bets where different horses, you might get money from getting weird things like, hey, this one six horse beat all of the blue horses. And on top of that, there's like these special endings that you might win. If it's a super tight race or if it's a blowout, you might be able to bet on that. Or if you want more than that, there's special abilities you get after each race to give you different ways to be different from all the players. They took like a basic concept of horse racing, added a layer of like, I feel like I'm at the track real time with the ability to add in all these gamer things that gamers love. It's awesome. You could play it with non-gamers, which is very basic. You could play it with gamers with everything thrown in. It is probably, it's, it's the most special thing because it's an experience that no other game has ever given me and I have played thousands of games. It's awesome. Ready, Set, Bet from AEG. This is designed by John D. Clare. Yeah, the same one that does all the card crafting games like uh, Mystic Veil vale recently did Dead Reckoning. Come on, does a party game like this? It's amazing. Can play up to nine. There's also going to be an app for this. And by the way, I've recorded some, uh, some special races that will be on the app for the guest announcing, which is gonna be fun. Um, but you don't have to use the app if you want to. It just makes it easier to run the game. But it's awesome, pretty set bet. All right, well, there you go. There's 10 games that I have recently reviewed that you can check those reviews uh, and, and, and learn more about them if they, they intrigue you. And I hope that you found uh, some new games to check out. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships with board games, and helping you on the next one you'll love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.